In this video, we're going to learn how to properly recreate this piecewise function in Desmos. If you're new here, my name is Olivier and I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who is currently doing a master's in statistics at Carleton University. I'm sure I'm not the only one who tried to work with piecewise functions in Desmos before and had a hard time. I was able to draw specific pieces by restricting the domain, but never really creating a real piecewise function where you can plug a point for all the intervals at once. And it's too bad because the students don't learn how to do it properly if you don't know how to do it yourself. And that's when I discovered the Desmos guide, which helped me how to do it the proper way. So I'll walk you through that very soon. And through exploration and trial and error, I was now able to work with piecewise functions like the one appearing on the screen. So let's first define what a piecewise function is. It's just a function such as this one, a function f of x. It is defined in pieces. Piecewise function, that means there's different pieces. So for example, you have the first piece. So notice how I created folders and I said there's a bad way to do piecewise functions and then there's a good way or the proper way to do piecewise functions. I'm not here to put judgment on anyone because I did the bad way for a long time. So the bad way would be to define the pieces separately. So for example, you could do something like y1 and equals x squared. So that's your first piece. So that's the classic parabola centered at zero. However, it's only defined when x is less than one. So the way we do that in Desmos is we do a squiggly bracket. Not sure what those are called. If you know, then definitely comment in the chat. And you have this piece. So you see how it's only defined on an interval and then you have y, y equals two. So I'll do y two is equal to two, but that's, and technically I think I need to do y for Desmos to recognize that. So that's a horizontal line at two and it's only defined from one to two. So it would be something like this, x to two, and it includes one and two here. And, and then the next piece is negative. So that will be my y3, and that would be negative x minus three, all squared, and then plus one. And then we need to restrict the domain. So that would be X is greater than two. So you see how this function here is exactly the graph and it, that would be fine, right? Like yeah, let's say I put it in green. So it matches the, everything would look fine and students wouldn't know. You don't know what you're doing with piecewise functions. The problem with that is twofold. One, it's not clear to see the inequalities, but you could, remedy this problem. So I'll put points. So there's open points at one, one. So that would be one, one. So let's say you put it, you can put an open point like this. Let's put them in red and I'll just duplicate them. So it's faster. And then the other point is at two zero that is open. And then the other ones are full. So then that's at two, uh, one, two, one, two, and then that's a full point. So I'll go back to the full point and then let's duplicate this one. So it's faster. And then that's at two, two. So you see how, and you could put them in green and you'll see why I put them in, uh, in red. Okay. So that, that works well. So that fixes the first problem. The second problem is the most important one. What if I ask you, what is F at three, for example? Well, mathematically speaking, you would do when X is three, which piece I'm on, am I on? Well, X is greater than one, so you're not on the first piece. And it's not between one and two, so you're not on the second piece. It is greater than two, so you are on the third piece. What you would do is you would put three in here three minus three is zero. So then you'd be at one. So when you look F at three is three, one. So that makes sense. Okay. But when you can't do it mathematically in Desmos, cause you have three different pieces. So that leads us to the good way. So when you click on help here, we don't know how to do it the good way. You can see that there's the Desmos user guide just over here. And by the way, 
this little question mark, there's a bunch of help. So if you need help with sliders, tables, restrictions, regressions, different video tutorials, you can search questions. It's a great resource. The, the Desmos user guide is very helpful. I'll put the link in the description below. So if you see here, there's different types of functions. And if we go down, let me zoom in for you. And you see that we have regular function, implicit functions, inequalities, polar, restricting the domain and range. We can do so like this here. And a piecewise function. This is what we are interested in. So it says use the condition column value and then the default is the rest. So what that means here is that from negative one to one, we're going to have y equals negative one. So if you look at negative one to one, y is negative one. Everywhere else, that's the default value is one. So you have y equals one everywhere else other than in between negative one and one. So let's apply this knowledge here to recreate our piecewise function using this definition. So if we go in the good way, I'll do f of x is equal to, we do squiggly brackets. By default, it is one here. So I put my intervals. My interval would be x is less than one. Column, my function. So that would be x squared. So you see how it defines it. So that's what we want. And then we want the other piece. So we put a comma to separate our pieces. So then we put the interval one is lesser or equal to X, which is lesser or equal to two. And then we put the column to indicate the function. So that's our two piece. And then the last piece by default is the rest of the interval, but we could fix it. So it's not the entire domain. But here I'll just write the function. I don't need to write the interval because it's the rest of the domain. So it's x minus three squared plus one. If you want to know how I put this image, I just put an image here. So the link to this Desmos file will be in the description below as well. So just if you're if you never used before uh, an image before in Desmos, then refer to my other videos. And you can also access this file below. So let's see the advantage of doing it this way. So that's the main part here. So if we add a slider, let's define uh, like a slider at, at one, for example, let's put it between negative two and five, something like that. So it's in our zoom without needing to go um, past the window. We could put it in steps, but let's keep it like that. And let's stay in our folder. So then we want a point at x naught and y naught. So y naught is just the function evaluated at this point. So let's put it, what's a nice color that goes, let's put it in black, how about it? And if we want, we can label it. And then look what happens when you press play. It is now, this function is now evaluatable. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but I don't care. At every point, whereas where it was the bad way, you couldn't substitute a point in each different piece. So that's the value of doing it all as one line of code. It's a lot neater, definitely a bit harder to read if you're not the one who put it in, but you could still kind of parse through it, right? We have when X is less than one, we have X squared. So that's this upward parabola. When X is between one and two, then we have Y equals two and then the rest is then the downward parabola. So that's it for today. If you like this video, you'll probably love the rest of the Desmos playlist appearing on the screen. The links to the two Desmos files are in the description below. Leave your questions and comments below. Remember to hit the subscribe button, like this video and share it with your friends. It's by far the best way to support the channel at this moment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Do The Work.